Decorators are finally coming to JavaScript, this time officially. Decorators are basically functions that look like this and are being called on top of classes or any class elements, like methods. The cool thing is that they are already on stage 3 proposal, which means they will be available very soon as a part of the new ECMAScript version. So what is a decorator? A decorator is something that looks like this, which has a name and an at sign in front. So what does it do in this case? Basically, decorators can be added on top of method, like in our case on top of the getAge method, or on top of classes and any other class fields. All right, we're gonna look at this later. But a decorator is basically a function that adds some superpower to an existing method. All right, and a decorator is called a metaprogramming because it modifies the existing function or whatever it returns, like here and it can completely replace how the function works but of course keeping the same kind of a syntax so if a function returns a string the decorator should also return a string ideally but let's look at our class here it's an example class with the constructor and it has a get age method which is going to return the name is some some age years old all right now we're passing goose and 20 years old and i'm creating an object from this class and i'm just console logging this out but let's take a look at our folder structure because it's important so what do we have here first of all um yeah a source folder with an index.js and our decorator which we're gonna see in a minute and we also have a babel config the reason is the de decorators are not supported at this point of time of the video, so you need to use Babel to transpile it properly, or you can use TypeScript. The decorators are fully gonna be supported in the new version of TypeScript, I think in 4.9, but otherwise just use Babel and install this plugin called Plugin Proposal Decorators and you're good to go. And inside babelconfig.json you're just adding this plugin like this and specify the version so that it takes the latest version of the of basically the proposal all right and inside package.json i simply have this script so that it transpiles the source folder so basically everything that is inside this folder and spits out a new lib folder so let's open it yeah basically two files that we have but in a transpiled version so it looks like this looks like a mess right and we are calling node.libindex.js basically to run our the generated index.js which is the source of truth okay so what what is the like like a structure of this decorator okay so let's go to our github page where this proposal lives and as you can see the decorator is basically a type if we talk about typescript it has a value uh, which is an input and we also have some context okay like options so kind of a what what kind for example it can be it can be a class a decorator method getter setter field and accessor we're gonna talk about this too and we also have some other options like name you you can specify a, a specific like a getter or setter you can say if it's private or not static or not and a custom initializer and so on all right, you have a lot of options, but the most important is, of course, the input. So the value that you're getting, giving this um, decorator and the output. So what the decorator is going to do. And in our case, this getAge method is the input and the output is gonna be, well, whatever we want. So let's like take a look at our decorator. Basically a normal looking function, but has a specific arguments. All right, so we have a value, but actually let me increase the font size a bit so that it's easier for you to see all right so we have a value as we saw in the proposal so value and some options for the context okay so the value is here it's going to be the input and kind we also saw this one and name is also here right and some other fields that we are not using because i don't need them so the kind is going to be method because get age is a method of the person class okay we are using an if statement to catch this method specifically and i'm gonna have a side effect basically this console log to put like a some console log with a timestamp okay just to see that it's working and later 
we have a try catch block. This is important so that you can catch any invalid input, okay? But inside the try block, we are basically applying whatever arguments we have. In this case, we have none. Um, so let me actually run our uh, script and we're gonna see that Goose is 20 years old, so it, it returned the same value. So the decorator at the moment does not do anything, all right? It's returning whatever this getH method returns. But let's kind of modify it, right? Let's, let's do something interesting. So do you see this result? Uh, variable inside the try, try block, this one. So this is where we can modify our method or at least the output of our method. So what can we do? So let's take the, so basically, as I told you, we don't have arguments, so we're not gonna do anything with, arg with arguments. We're just gonna apply them, but I'm gonna append something to the result. So I'm gonna write something like, um, Gus is a developer, software developer, or let's say just a developer, okay? And just plus whatever result is our method already gives us. So just plus result. And I would expect uh, to get a new output here. So let's run it again. And as you can see, Gus is a developer. Gus is 20 years old. Now, I just want to add a little space here so that it looks nicer. And voila, so we have our output. And the cool thing is that we didn't have to change our method. A decorator is basically a higher order, higher order function that you have, for example, also in React that didn't modify the method itself, but added some extra functionality. Now let's take a look at our second example. I've rewritten our code a bit. So now we have this logged decorator and the similar person class, although we don't have this method anymore. And we just have a constructor which takes an age. And um, yeah, I'm passing 20 as the person's age. And I'm gonna lock this out, but we are using this decorator again. And now the decorator is on top of a class, not a method anymore. So what do you think is the use case here? So let me run the command again, just to output uh, whatever the person class has. All right, as you can see, it's basically a class with one property inside. Age is 20, because obviously we passed 20, right? And we have this method, constructing an instance of person with arguments 20. This is coming from here. Now, this decorator looks a bit different, but same at the same time. So we still have an if statement to check for the kind. As you can see, it's not method anymore, and it's class instead, because this is being used on top of a class and not a method. This is what we want to catch. And here we have our something similar, basically a class that extends a value like this. And it kind of means that we are inheriting from our value and creating a new class under the hood, right? That's pretty interesting. And calling super with, to take all the arguments. And this is where my console log is uh, placed actually. But since this doesn't do much, again, it's gonna output the same class that we have. I wanna add something cool. So apparently here we are uh, passing 20 to set an age. Why don't we increase this age, for example? All right, so I'm going to create a, or basically reference my age again, because you have access to your original class because you're extending from it, right? So let's say this age is equal to arguments. So it's going to be an array, as you can see here. So it's going to be an array. We are taking the first argument, which is going to be the, the age and plus seven. And now we're setting our age to that. And I'm going to also create a new variable, right? You can also create new variables here. And I'm going to call it modified by me or by, by user, right? And let's set it to true, some arbitrary value. I just want to show you that you can modify your class completely on the fly. So let's run it again. And now we have our class, but we also have a new property, which actually does not exist in the original class. So how cool is that? Basically some superpowers, some hidden superpowers under the hood that you can add across all of your code. Angular does it all over the place and Java Spring Boot does this as well. 
That's what I know from my own experience. So yeah, that's cool. One more thing that I wanted to show you in the GitHub. You probably saw this accessor, right? The kind accessor. So what is it? I did a bit of a research. It's basically a type of a property that is now being added together with the decorators, although it's not really used that much and it's not really such a significant thing. But let me search for it first. I saw a good example. So, so I basically can add decorators in front of it, but that's not the example. I want to show you what exactly this accessor does here. All right, so just look at this C class, okay? We have a locked uh, decorator, but that's fine. And we have this accessor keyword and X is equal one, equals is one to one. And here it says this example roughly the sugars into the following, basically it compiles to the following. So we're gonna have this X again, and we also it automatically creates a getter and setter for you. So it's gonna create a getter for this X and a setter for this X. And at the same time, it's gonna create a private variable. So, so this hash means a private property of the class, and it's gonna initialize it with one. So I don't really know why this had to be added. I guess it's kind of cool to automatically create a getter and setter for the property, so why not? But yeah, this is basically being added together with this decorator's proposal. So I hope you liked this video and learned quite a lot. If you still did not understand something, please write me in the comment below, and I hope either me or some other fellow developer is going to answer you and help you. And also, please don't forget to subscribe, and I'm going to see you in the next video.